Christy Pizal's wedding at the Newman Center in Columbia, Missouri. It's a cold, crisp day on November the 6th, 1993, and people are coming in to get dressed for the wedding. Zachary, did you hear that? Before the wedding. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh my God, she's got the camcorder on her son, and we can't run. I was ready to listen. <laughs>
My dear friends in Christ, we have assembled together in great joy and happiness. We are assisted by God's presence, our presence with each other, because these two young people have, through the guidance of God, come to this moment in their lives to celebrate their love with us, asking for God's blessing and his power of love to be part of their life. You are already made holy. You are created in the image and likeness of God, your holy creator. Therefore, you are already lovable and loved. So we are greatly encouraged that this moment is surrounded by all the powers of heaven and earth that joins all of life together in that same love. We thank Father Michael Quinn for being with us to extend his blessing upon you as well. As pastor, he will assist you and guide you in your journey of faith with this community. And we thank you for being shepherd to this community. With that introduction, we ask for God's blessing as we come together in his name through the power of his Holy Spirit. Father, hear our prayers for Tina Marie and Stephen William, who today will be united in marriage before your holy people. Give them your blessing, strengthen their love for each other, for we ask this through your Son, Jesus, who is our Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Will the assembly please be seated as we listen to the Word of God.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. With God on our side, who can be against us? Since God did not spare his own son, but gave him up to benefit us all, we may be certain, after such a gift, that he will not refuse anything he can give. Could anyone accuse those that God has chosen? When God acquits, could anyone condemn? Could Christ Jesus? No. He not only died for us, he rose from the dead. And there, at God's right hand, he stands and pleads for us. Nothing, therefore, can come between us and the love of Christ. Even if we are troubled or worried or being persecuted or lacking food or clothes or being threatened or even attacked, these are the trials through which we triumph by the power of him who loved us. For I am certain of this, neither death nor life, no angel, no prince, nothing that exists, nothing still to come, not any power or height or depth, nor any created thing can ever come between us and the love of God, visible in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
it can be summed up in what we have read. And what was the echoing words? The echoing words. May they be one. And you, in coming into each other's life, wanted to be one. And you are one. You have shared moments of intimacy and love so that you are beginning that process of becoming stronger and stronger, one flesh, one body, one spirit. And you know what? You are discovering the mystery of God. God is not some far off mystery where we say, oh, isn't that nice? I believe in God, I believe in the Lord, I believe in the Holy Spirit. Oh yes, we can intellectualize and say, oh yes, yes, yes. Just like, I believe that 2 plus 2 is 4, and I believe that 6 plus 6 is 12. Sure. But if you love each other, then you incarnate that experience of God's love. So as you hold each other, as you listen to each other, you make God real, just as close as, excuse me, I want to use that hand, thank you. Yeah. Now you've got it. Now hang on to each other. Do you see what I mean? This is as close as God is to you. Because you can feel the God who lives in each of your heart through this fleshliness. And that is what makes you holy. Whenever you are feeling alone and you want your God to visit you and your partner is near enough, reach out and hold each other's feet. Which leads me to believe that if you hold each other's hands, when you're having a disagreement, it makes it a lot smoother. When you're trying to say, but I would like it this way, or I would like it that way, or I disagree with this course of action in raising children. Hold each other's hands. And I'll, you'll be surprised at how difficult it is to raise your voice and holler at each other, or leave a cross on each other. Because looking at your two eyes right now, I mean two here, two there, of course. <laughs> How can you be mad at each other when the two of you have such dreamy eyes? <laughs> Remember this moment of joy. Look into each other's eyes and see the message of love that has brought you to this moment. And it will make a lot of things a lot easier. You can believe that? Try it. Yeah, try it. Because all of these people who are here, they have looked into your eyes over the years with their love, with their hope, looking into your future with your eyes. And in that, their love has nurtured life within you. So that you can come to this moment and give yourselves as a gift to the other. You, Stephen, are a gift to Tina. And Tina, you are a gift to Stephen. If you remember that you are gifts to each other, you can become more one each day. But I will say you need to work at it. To take one another for granted without that morning kiss, sending each other <coughs> off to your lives, whatever you need, without holding each other's hands <coughs> as you fall asleep, maybe saying in our Father together in prayer, asking God's blessing to be with you through the night so that no harm or danger can come to you, but falling asleep with each other's hand in the other. Can remind you of your giftedness to the other and the living presence of God
being that close. All these people have brought you to this moment. You now can give yourselves to each other. And if you're willing to let God be the power and the presence in your love, and their love being a power and a presence in your heart, then that second reading will be truly real in your experience. Nothing, neither angels, nor the past, nor the present, nor the future, nor powers, nor any creature, can separate you from the love that you have for each other. It will be that strong. Take it each day. Do not take each other for granted or the love you have for each other for granted. Do the little things, that message, that gives the message of your love for each other. And hold each other's hands when you fight. Always do that. Okay? Because your children will be watching you and they need your love so that when you <coughs> talk to them, you can hold their hand too and say, let's talk. Because God is as near as you hold each other. So God lives. that our love has brought you to this point of knowing that. So that you can share that through the rest of your life.
grace of God. Let us with that, that unity, that belief in the presence and the power of Jesus living within us, use the words our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. It is at this time that we extend a special blessing on this happy occasion to the bride and the groom. Holy Father, creator of the universe, maker of man and woman in your own image and likeness, source of blessing for united married life. We humbly pray to you for this woman, who today is united with her husband in the sacrament of marriage. May your fullest blessing come upon her and her husband, so that they may together rejoice in your gift of married life. May they both praise you in their word and in their action when they are happy and turn to you in their sorrow for strength and power and guidance. May they be glad that you keep them in their love for each other in their work and know that you are with them in their needs of every kind. May they pray to you in this community of faith and may they be your witnesses in the world, in the power of your love. May they reach a ripe old age in the company of their friends and their family members and come at last to the kingdom of heaven where you are Lord forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look then not upon our sins and failings that separate us from each other, but upon the faith that makes us your holy people. And grant to us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, for you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Because we have gathered together in the power of God's love and the love that we share for each other and with each other. Let us turn to the people next to us and extend to one another a sign of the Lord's peace. <laughs>
Oh, oh man. man. All of them. They ain't my brothers. Brother in laws. No. Steve is my brother in law. That's his. Yeah, he's a brother. Yeah, no, I didn't marry him. Oh, it's not? His brothers don't count. Yeah. 